Hello everyone! In my previous video, I gave a brief information about transcription and eukaryotic messenger RNA processing. In this video, I will focus on translation process in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. So let's go back to the beginning for general reminder. There are four bases, adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine. Adenine pairs with thymine and cytosine pairs with guanine by hydrogen bonding. These base pairs connect together to form two complementary strands known as the oxoribonucleic acid or DNA. A gene is a stretch of DNA that codes for a specific polypeptide or specific protein. We've learned in the previous video how to go from specific gene to messenger RNA. In this video we will look how to go from messenger RNA to protein by a process called translation. In prokaryotes, protein factor is called ribosome attached to the messenger RNA while it is still being transcribed. So in prokaryotes, there are no nucleus. Both transcription and translation occur in the cytoplasm. Translation begins in the 5' end of messenger RNA while 3' end of messenger RNA is still attached to DNA. In eukaryotes, once transcription is over, mature messenger RNA leaves the nucleus through nuclear pores and go to cytoplasm to ribosome for translation. Ribosomes then read the genetic code in the messenger RNA sequence to produce a polypeptide chain made up of amino acids. So, let's start with two questions. What is ribosome and what is genetic code? Ribosome consists of large subunit and small subunit. The subunits are referred to in terms of their sedimentation rate and measured in Swedberg units. Prokaryotic ribosome has small 30S subunit and large 50S subunit, while eukaryotic ribosome has small 40S subunit and 60S large subunit. Each subunit can exist separately in the cytoplasm, but they join together on the messenger RNA during translation. Ribosomal subunits consist of proteins and ribosomal RNA. Ribosomal RNA is a type of non-coding RNA. Ribosomal RNA forces transfer RNA molecule and messenger RNA molecule to process and translate the information into proteins. So what is genetic code? In the messenger RNA, the genetic code is set of three nucleotides known as codons. Each codon corresponds with a specific amino acid or stop signal. There are 64 different codons, 61 specify amino acids, while the rest is used as a stop codon. UAA, UAG and UGA is a stop codon. There are 22 genetically encoded amino acids, 21 found in eukaryotic cells. AUG, as shown here, is a start codon that codes for methionine. Translation of messenger RNA by ribosome occurs in three steps, initiation, elongation and termination. In translation, the codons of messenger RNA are read from 5' to 3' direction by molecules called transfer RNAs. One end of transfer RNA has a set of three nucleotides called anticodons that matches with the messenger RNA codon through base pairing. The other end of transfer RNA carries a specific amino acid that is specified by the codon. In prokaryotes, there is an area near the 5' end of messenger RNA molecule known as untranslated region. This section of messenger RNA is located between the first transcribed nucleotide and AUG start codon of the coding region. This section does not affect the protein amino acid sequence. This area has a ribosome binding site, basically shows a ribosome where to start. In prokaryotes, this site is called Scheindel-Garner box, named after scientists so far characterize it. This sequence interacts with the ribosomal RNA molecule that composes the ribosome. This interaction anchors the 30S subunit to the correct mRNA location. The initiator transfer RNA carrying the methionine binds to start codon of the messenger RNA at the ribosome's P site. Then 
large ribosomal subunit joins the complex forming translation initiation complex. In eukaryotes, the initiator transfer RNA first binds to the small ribosomal subunit forming a complex, then it binds to messenger RNA for translation initiation. So, in eukaryotes, the situation is a little bit different. Instead of binding to the Schein-Delgarno sequence, the eukaryotic initiation complex recognizes 7 methyl guanosine cap at the 5' end of messenger RNA. Ribosome moves to 5' cap with the help of cap binding protein and initiation factors. Once the ribosome at the 5' cup, it scans the messenger RNA in the 5' to 3' direction, searching for the AUG start codon. According to the COSAX rule, the nucleotides around the AUG indicate whether it is the correct start codon. So once the AUG codon identified, the other proteins and cup binding protein dissociates and the large 60S subunit binds to the complex of initiator transfer RNA, messenger RNA, and the 40S subunit. This step completes the initiation step in eukaryotes. When the translation complex is formed, the transfer RNA binding region of the ribosome consists of three compartments, the amino acid or A site, that binds to the incoming charged amino acid transfer RNAs, peptidyl or P site that binds transfer RNAs coming, uh, carrying amino acids that have formed peptide bonds with the growing polypeptide chain, and the exit or E site that releases dissociated transfer RNA so they can be recharged with free amino acids. The initiator transfer RNA carrying methionine occupies a P site at the beginning of elongation phase for both transcription for both eukaryotes and prokaryotes. The basics of elongation are the same in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So once the translation started, the next thing that's going to happen is the other transfer RNA that matches the next codon will sit to the A site shown in yellow bringing the appropriate amino acid. So now the polypeptide bond will form between the methionine and the new amino acid, in this case is proline. This step transfers the methionine from the first transfer RNA onto the amino acid on the second transfer RNA and the A side. The formation of peptide bond is catalyzed by peptidyl transferase, an RNA-based enzyme that integrated into the large ribosomal subunit. Methionine will form the N-terminus of polypeptide, and the new amino acid, in this case proline, will form the C-terminus. Once the polypeptide is formed, the messenger RNA molecule is pulled through the ribosome by three nucleotides, or exactly one codon. This movement of ribosome allows the empty transfer RNA to be released from the complex through exit site, and allow the A site to be emptied for the new transfer RNA that will carry the appropriate amino acid for the next codon. So it goes on like this, forming a long polypeptide chain. The last step is translation termination step. The translation termination occurs when a stop codon UAG, UAA or UGA is encountered on the messenger RNA. Upon aligning with the A site, these stop codons are recognized by protein release factors that resemble the transfer RNA. The release factors are different in eukaryotes and prokaryotes, but what they basically do in both is to instruct the peptidyl transferase enzyme to add a water molecule to the carboxyl end of the P site amino acid. This reaction forces the p site amino acid to detach from its transfer RNA and the newly formed pep polypeptide chain is released from the complex. The small and large ribosomal subunits are detached from the messenger RNA and from each other. After translation is complete, the messenger RNA is degraded so the nucleotides can be reused in another transcription and translation process. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy the video.